Welcome my friends to the beautiful Oregon coast. Today, as you can see, we'll be clamming. So let's see what we get. I'll be back with you when I find something. In the day, my friends, that's what a small razor clam looks like. But when you suck it, you have to keep it. There's no putting it back. A little dimple shot down and putting it on there, pulled it out. That's a razor clam, my friends. Now I gotta put it in my bag, move on. Didn't get, didn't have time to turn the camera on because worried the waves are gonna come up and remove the dimple. That's a hole right there. See that hole? I'm gonna suck that hole right now. I'm gonna pull them out. He went down. There he is, my friends. Right there, bigger one. Razor clam. You get 15 of these in Oregon, my friend. And you cannot, like you see on TikTok, pour, pour salt on them like you do in, they do in England. They're different and that's highly illegal. So number two, keep going. This is one right there. Watch this. Now, <laughs> try not to crack them. I don't know if I'm even showing this shit. Crap. Oh, try not to sit there and crack them, my friends, because it becomes a pain. And just like that, there's another one. So, oh yeah, a little tip. Don't ever buy a claminator. Every time I'm on clams, the screw gets stuck, and I'm banging this thing into a square because it never freaking works. Don't buy the claminator. It ain't worth the hundred and how much money it is. Don't ever buy it. Go cheap shit and it works fine. You know what? I thought I'd come over here and talk a little bit while I'm looking for clams. You know? See, I have four or five right now. That's perfect for me, myself, right? The, but I live in a house of three. And one of the people I clam with in the house caught one. So I'm going to go for my limit. If I didn't, if I was by myself, I would definitely not have to keep clam and I'll go home but you know live with some people my my parents you know a little old, older they eat you know so trying to go here find a clam just razor clams you know nothing spectacular um but I'm enough for me but now like I said I have other people I gotta feed so that's where like I I don't have to take my limit every time but now like I said I have more people to feed so I do I have to try to find my limit um, so I'll be content going home right now, right? But uh, at the end of the day, I hope you guys can see shoot. It is one of those things where, you know, my family kind of relies on me a little bit. Um, especially coming out here, doing this. Now, I could be all the way down there, but the second I go down there, it's going to push me up. So it's another reason I'm not down there right in the surf. Um, there's a lot of reasons I'm still out here. It's coming in. It's definitely not prime now, but... Uh, and, you know, it's, it's one of those things I got to feed my family, but... Not that we heard on food or anything, but it's a nice little treat. A lot of people, when they clam, right, will go like this, tap, and then move on. If you don't wait, it takes a second for the show to show up, to swell down or donut, whatever you want to call it. Everybody on TikTok just clams right along and skips right over the clam shows. So they tap, move, tap, move. If you tap and wait, usually they'll suck down, and that's how you know they're there. But if you don't wait, you're just going to walk over all your clams, and you're going to end up with nothing. That's my tip of the day, my friends, for clamming. I've, see, I'm incoming touch. Now I'm getting pushed up the beach, but as some of that's clammed around professional clammers, commercial clammers, as you can call it, um, people are dragging bags and sacks, bringing them to the market and selling them. Oh, I'm, my nose is running. Um, start picking up on little tips, right? Now, at the end of the day, you know, you start becoming a better clammer. So, like tapping if you think you see something and waiting all of a sudden they'll show but if you just tap walk tap walk you will never see the clams and if you turn around once in a while sometimes your, your footprints will start having shows if you don't look back you'll walk right over them and then you just never get the clam and if there's someone behind you they just suck the clam right behind you be like where did that come from well you showed it to them you tapped they walk up and it's showing and they catch them so you're doing all the work for the other person all right so i thought one was there i waited so you got to be a little you know I want to say tactical, but have a little smarts about how you clam. Because we come down here and get a limit a lot of times when it's a good tide. And people are like, how the hell did you do that? We walked all day, never got a clam. I've talked to people, I say, yo, geez, you know, I've been clamming for 30 years. I've come down here for 30 years, never caught my limit. Because people tend to walk too fast right over the shows. Now, I know what I'm looking for somewhat. That's why I think I show I'm going to sit there and wait. But... Majority of the time I keep walking, right? And occasionally I'll look back, make sure I'm not walking over any. 
but gotta be kind of tactical, smart, however you want to word it, right? But that's a cool clam or shell. Um, gotta have a little smarts about how you do it. Have a little bit of a game plan because, like I said, I watch TikTokers, all these people on there making this content, and they're walking right over all the clam shells. The, the, tap, you know, the camera will see and they won't. And they walk right on by it. Um, and that's where you tend to be a clammer, but you don't tend to be a catcher, you know? And if you want to eat, like that could be something because a little V right there ends up being nothing. Sometimes you see a little V like that, right? Really lightly, and that's just because the neck was up feeding and then it went down. So you know that it could be something there. It's another thing to look for, my friends. Um, right? So all kinds of things, little shows. Sometimes little, when you look at a Rage Club, there's a little bit of black on their siphon. Sometimes just the black little circle of the siphon will be sticking up in the surf when the water's coming up and down. So you gotta look for that stuff too, right? You look for donuts. There's donuts where they pop out the sand. There's some where they suck down. There's some where there's like a ring. All that is shows. And if you go to Google, look up razor clam shows, a razor clam sign, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right? Now I'm gonna walk down here, but see this wave coming? <laughs> I'm gonna get pushed right back up. Since I'm filming, now I can go down here. But when I'm not filming, I tap and I see something, I turn the camera on, right? So I'm rolling, essentially. So it can be a little more quick with stuff. Um, See, so just like that, I already get it washed back up the beach. So that's come, on the incoming tide. See, it's still coming. We're fighting that. So hopefully some of this, these tips help. I will try to sit there and film some of the cooking and stuff at the end um, for you guys. And uh, real quick tip, um, someone that had a family member in a sneaker wave, never turn your back on the Pacific Ocean. It's a very mean ocean. Um, very rough, very dangerous. It's nothing to play around with. People get killed every year in this ocean, swept out on logs, go swimming out there, can't get in, rip currents. Don't play with the Pacific, my friends. It's very mean, very dangerous. All right, I'll be back with you guys when I find something. You all saw mine come out, came out whole, but I have my bag low, bag was low, got kicked, you know, got hit with the clam gun. It is what it is, but you all saw them come out whole. That's all that matters. They popped open, now we pull them out, and they go right in the water over there. That just cools them and stops the cooking. Some people use ice water, we don't. Pop, both popped open, they go out into the water. Since all you do with this, my friends. Grab the next one. Drop them in. This one, they popped, essentially. The other one's cracked, so it's gonna, gonna have to be peeled off. That's all it's on. You wanna explain what you're doing, and what what kind of knife you're using, et cetera? So a small knife here. Like a little paring, pamper chef paring knife? Yep. I leave the water on real slow. I cut this part off. Okay. And then I go up on the zipper here. Up the first siphon, and I go the next siphon, and you're doing this to save as much meat as possible. Where some people just clip stuff off, right? Clip the guts off and stuff like that. Go ahead, explain. So cleaning. I think this is its lungs there. Get the lungs off, and I grab this, and I cut this part of the guts off. Then I open the digger up, split the digger. Which is the best part of the clam. Clean the sand out. 
Clean the sand, any little bit of guts that are in there. And it scrapes a little bit with the knife to get any leftover junk. Now what are you doing? That's it. Wash it. Mm -hmm. I'll hold it closer. Real close. Yeah. So essentially, what? Make oh, sure. Camera went dark. All clean. Clean, no sand, no grit. You won't be eating the grit or sand. It's absolutely clean. clean. The way you do it, my friends. You can cut the guts out and all that stuff, but then you just clean. lose a little bit of meat. Another one here real quick. Let's show you another one right here. Okay, once again, take this, cut this part of the siphon off. Okay. When I talk about like the neck, that little black piece you cut off is what I look for just under the sand sometimes. Up the first siphon. Does got a lot of sand. Mm -hmm. Up the second siphon. People use scissors, but we don't use scissors. Clean the lungs off. Just slowly scrape the lungs off. Pull it off. Using my fingernail. Mm -hmm. Cut the guts off there. Okay. Now we're going to open the digger up, splitting the digger. And split the second part of the digger. Cleans all the sand out. Sand any black stuff. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure you do a good job cleaning it because you don't want to taste sand when you're eating it. If you eat the sand, you're eating rocks pretty much, and that doesn't taste very good. Check it. One more time. A little scrape in there, get that little bit of junk off. Check all the different pieces, make sure there's no sand in the clean. Clean. That way you're never eating a grime or gunk and clean. Some places you go, just don't take these steps, then you tune in this um you tune into like sand and all this stuff. I've had other people and it's I had to spit it out. I hate to say that, but I had to spit theirs out. These are you won't eat sand at this point with these, so that's the way to do it. And at that time when I ate those, someone else's, I ate it, right? I was just being nice, just kind of choked it down like, ah, you know, but I didn't, I didn't ever eat that person small, again. Smaller one. That little black piece you just caught, like I said, is just under the sand sometimes when the, we got a little bit of water over it and that's what I can look for. And then I know I tap it, it sucks down and that's where I know he's there. So you got to look for that sometimes. Go ahead. Up, second digger, wash it out, clean the lungs off. Use my fingernail, come back here, cut the guts off. This digger can be split one shot so small. Split open. Clean any little bit of guts that's left there. The tide really wasn't great today. It was actually pretty crappy, but for what it is, we did pretty good. I <laughs> mean, really good, but still a really, we, we got enough to eat, but at the same time, it's a really crappy number to talk because of the weather, but enough to eat, so that's all that matters. There you go. All clean. Look at that, very clean, no grit, no nothing. That's it, my friends.